My name is uh, Gian Giacomo Ermacora. I come from Italy. I work uh, and uh, and I live in Italy actually, and I work for a company that is called Emerosoft, that is a um, uh, client partner for for uh, Italy for this country. Um, we decided three years ago uh, to build an integration from Enterprise Architect to, to Client, basically because uh, Enterprise Architect is the leader uh, for uh, all the visual modeling and design and all the, all the, the standards for, for example, UML and, uh, and all the structure like, uh, like this. Um, Enterprise Active is distributed from the FAC system. FAC system is a company based in Australia and is the absolutely leader for, for the uh, design, and modeling and, and all the things like that. So uh, we decided to, to make this integration. At the beginning, uh, we made the, the, the integration that was called a little version, light version. It was free, but uh, still not available right now because we decided to create another uh, extension after the, uh, the success we had with, uh, with APO 100 because we had more than uh, uh, 100 customer feedback just in one year that the APO was uh, available, more than uh, 2050 downloads, and more than 50 requests from potential free customer. And for free customer, we uh, um, identified a customer that needs to have something more than APO 1.0. Because the APO 1.0 uh, had some characteristic, but it was not so let me say, uh, usable and, uh, and uh, a good tool like uh, AAPO right now. Uh, in 2013, we decided so to, to build, yes, now, now uh, we are in 2014, but this presentation was made uh, just last year. Uh, we made the AAPO uh, in, in version uh, 2.0. And basically the, the commercial version, the APO, Two uh, basically is called also the APO Professional Edition. Um, have some uh, very nice characteristics. For example, uh, the ability to export the packages inside the Enterprise Architect, uh, the ability to select and export specific elements, diagram, and packages, uh, and something like a preview mode and a wizard that is very very nice uh, for the for the final user. Um, APO 2.0 is a, is a quite big success right now, and I would like to, to show you uh, uh, this kind of integration. Uh, Nick told me about that. Uh, you basically already know something about the Polarion, uh, the product uh, uh, we have, and uh, so I, I will step. I will step directly to the to the enterprise architect and not uh, in uh, in the in deep in uh, in Polarion. Basically, this project you you are you are watching it on on your on your screen is uh, a demo project I made on my on my virtual machine on my virtual, um, uh, Windows virtual machine, and this project is based on a, on a template that is already available in, uh, in 2014 in so. So we have some definition about, for example, system requirements, software requirements, test case, mechanical requirements, and all, all of the things like that. Maybe you already know some uh, this template and this structure. Uh, we already have also some work items inside. I will not delete anything. I will keep the, the, the project as is, as, as, uh, as Polarion created uh, eight, uh, uh, 10 minutes ago. Um, and my goal is to use my enterprise architect project and to export all the items and all the diagrams I have on my enterprise architect inside my playroom. <clears throat> Basically, the integration is uh, uh, the direction of this, uh, of this integration is from enterprise architect to Polarium. Actually, uh, we decided to, to use this kind of, uh, of structure, this kind of uh, uh, direction, because enterprise architect basically is uh, at the beginning of the, of the demo, the, when, when uh, some uh, uh, high-level requirements uh, are defined in Enterprise Architect, the, the people take charge to uh, create the design or the structure or the requirements itself. And then this, this, this object, this generic object, we have also customer 
uh, that in enterprise access create test case uh, are imported in in Equalion. In Equalion, all the objects can, that comes from uh, enterprise access um, are uh, live are live for uh, basically uh, part of the process in the V model start to uh, the, the life cycle of the of the project itself. Um, enterprise architect, maybe some someone of you already know uh, the tool. Uh, is a is a, a desktop tool, so it's not a web tool, and can support all the types of the elements and diagrams uh, you would like to uh, use. Uh, in in my project, I can hear some noise. Okay, um, basically, I, I created a project where I have some elements inside, some diagrams inside, and some packages. The packages for enterprise actually basically are this kind of Python uh, that is uh, basically a container of other elements. Like in this in the structure, we have the first one that is a diagram. Then we have a package that is more than basic that, that contains uh, inside other diagrams and other stuff like that. And in the enterprise architect, it's possible to define uh, several levels of elements and several uh, types of objects. All these objects can be imported, or we can select just a subset of them to be imported in in, in Polarium. Um, <clears throat> this integration uh, is currently integrated inside the interface. So, if I go to extensions, uh, and we have uh, we will have a, a, a menu voice that is uh, Polarium integration with three functions: the export to Polarium, the import from Polarium, and, and AD, of course the about uh, the project. The export from, to Polarium is basically the main uh, functionality that AATO uh, uh, provides the user. Uh, everything is based, this interface is based uh, as a uh, kind of wizard, so uh, we have to complete the, the, the information here and just uh, uh, with next, the process will, will uh, go ahead. Uh, for uh, all the steps before to export the element to the player. Um, <coughs> this interface is quite simple. Uh, I would like to underline one one thing because we we, we miss the, uh, uh, right now to place a button like uh, uh, help, but just pressing F1, uh, there is a, a really nice documentation when you can take a look at the how to use uh, uh, Enterprise Actor because it's of course uh, made for usability, uh, the interface and all the stuff like that. But uh, many many times we had some questions from the final users that can be resolved directly in, inside the documentation. So just pressing F1 when you have AAPO open it and you will get immediately the uh, the online guide uh, that is very very helpful. I, I suggest you uh, just take a look. Before to to use the the, the this plugin. So uh, in the first interface, uh, the APO asks to to provide the information for the connection to the uh, to the Polarian. Why this? Because all the information are dynamically loaded from Polarian. What I mean, I I will explain uh, uh, visually immediately. So the first information uh, asked is, is the server URL. Actually, I, ha I am on the same uh, uh, server, so my, my server will be just the local host. I can come back to my APO. So here, local host, the server port is important, and of course, uh, the position of the, of the uh, repository, the version repository of your uh, Polar Info. Um, the system asks us the project ID, the username, and the password of a real user, and this is very important. The username and password is the username, the, the same user and password you use in Polarion. So um, here I will provide just the default information admin and the password admin here. And the project ID uh, should be marked not like the project name that is here. But the project ID should be taken directly in the in this section, and this is the ID of the project for the synchronization. 
Okay. So then here, complete AAPO. Um, it is possible to, to set the connection to be reused uh, because many times happen that uh, it's very helpful to um, synchronize many times, many projects, or basically uh, uh, make the um, make some changes on on enterprise access project, and uh, you would like just to synchronize to the, the modification, this kind of uh, uh, modification inside your project, so you can save the connection to be reused. Um, actually, we find an issue. This is a, a little information for you. Uh, about this, this functionality because in some operating systems happens that uh, the, the active user that can try to that try to uh, set the connection doesn't have the grant on the on the internal database. So uh, we're going to release on another another minor release of Enterprise Act that will will fix this kind of uh, of issue. Um, then after that, so and the, of course the, the the connection saved will will appear here in the saved connection uh, list. Be reused in the in the time. Um, here we have two buttons that are very helpful. I suggest you all the time to test the connection you are going to use, and this is very important because the, the system will try to get not only the connection to the server but also the project ID. So uh, if we made something some error, some mistake, uh, the defining in the project ID, the test connection will underline us immediately the the the, the error form. And of course, this proxy setting is quite easy, and it's very important in the situation when, when we have Polarian uh, after um, behind a, a proxy or the, the connection is not dialed to the, to the server. In my case, of course, I have just uh, a virtual machine, so this is not helpful for me. So the, the second interface <coughs> asks us to. Uh, uh, select an existing database or create a new mapping database. This step is very important because define if we are uh, synchronized, we are exporting the elements in enterprise access the first time in case we select the new uh, mapping, or we are going just to, to synchronize the uh, uh, enterprise access object to Colarian. So in this case, we will select an existing mapping. Right now, we don't have any kind of mapping. And the mapping basically is uh, the relation the relation that we have between one element in the enterprise access and one more type that we have in, in our Polarium project. The mapping is very easy to, to create. So you mapping, uh, the system asks us where to, to uh, save the, the mapping itself. And to provide um, um, a name for the for the mapping, mapping demo phase. Okay. The, um, when I press next, the system, the AAPO, is loading all this structure, the tree structure we can see in the project browser inside Enterprise Architect, and it's providing us some information about the. Um, the type of elements we have in our project, the AA type that is quite different. Uh, if you are uh, already expert for enterprise architect, you may already know that the type of elements in enterprise architect can be basically three kind of elements: the package, so basically this kind of uh, uh, orange icon, and an element that can be, um, for example, uh, uh, let me just open one. This is a diagram. This is an element, for example, and the third kind of element we, can, we may have is just a diagram, and the diagram is basically uh, this one, so a picture, an image that in an in enterprise architecture, of course, is dynamic and is created uh, using the elements that, that uh, um, we have defined in, in, our, in our project. Um, this mapping, allow us to map all the elements we have inside our project to uh, uh, the elements we may have in our Polarion uh, project. Um, do you remember that in the first interface we selected the server, we selected the project, then in this, in this interface uh, the information about the project, the information about the work item types are immediately loaded, dynamically loaded here in this interface where we can map 
all the elements and uh, between uh, the, 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 the environment. Uh, as you can see, she will have the project model that is basically the first element. Uh, we have um, all the blocks uh, in Inspire's in, uh, in architect are divided in models, so we can have uh, one model or more than one model in the same project that basically is a container of packages and a container of diagrams and elements itself. Um, and so uh, APO is also able to have and to uh, show you multiple models here. And the first model will be mapped at, as a package, uh, uh, is mapped as a package in Enterprise Architect and will be, will be mapped as a Polarium type like ED. As you may know, in Polarium we, we have uh, many uh, possibilities to define a specific Wolkaitan type. But one basic Wolkaitan type is, of course, the eating. The eating is basically the uh, eating inside the document. Uh, uh, Polari introduced the, um, the eating Wolkaitan type, or probably at the end of 2010, uh, when, when the, the live documents were introduced. And all the, uh, we decided that by default, the packages inside the enterprise architect will be mapped in the, in the eating just to provide to the, to the user uh, an easy way to uh, have all the elements, all the structure uh, in, in both, uh, uh, both environments. But it's possible also to define another kind of mapping for all the elements we have uh, uh, shown here in the, in the element tree. How to, how to do that? For example, uh, eating is fine for me. I would like to just map them uh, as eating, but I would like to map this diagram uh, that is, uh, um, uh, this is not a diagram, let me, find a diagram here, for example, this customer order, uh, that in Polarion, I would like to make it like a design object or something like that. Just clicking here, uh, AAPO will load dynamically all the work item types we have in, 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 in our uh, project we selected in the first interface. <coughs> so in this case, I can directly, for example, map it like, um, uh, electrical requirements, system requirements is fine for me. If I select uh, a polarian type on my on my tree, the system will ask me if I would like to map all the elements typed in enterprise architect like diagram and collaborations. So the uh, the system will analyze the the both key diagram and collaboration as the the, the system requirement I, I selected here. If I press yes. The system will load uh, again all, all all the three and all the items that in enterprise architect has the type of elements like diagram and a package a head type as collaboration will be mapped as system requirements. So I can do the same also for for example this kind of object. This is not a diagram. This is just an element, and I can select here for example uh, I don't know uh, for example a task and for elements, the system will ask the same kind of uh, question or uh, uh, the tested before. So if I would like to map the, all the elements in, in, the, in, time, in the same uh, mode, but <coughs> it's also possible to uh, make an advanced mapping. Why this? Because um, as you may know, in Polarion, we have the possibility to add some uh, information for all the work item types that are basically are the custom fields. Uh, where I can specify, for example, uh, another information that enrich my, my, uh, my structure. The same I can do in, in Enterprise Architect. In Enterprise Architect, the custom fields are called AA tagged value. The tagged value is basically a, a structure key and value that I can assign to a, a, specific, a specific object. In this case, I don't have any kind of tagged value in my, in my Enterprise Architect. So in the enterprise architect object, so uh, I don't have the possibility to map a capital field directly in my, uh, uh, in my project. So I select yes, and as you can see, some elements are mapped in the, in the same way. Um, I would like to just to take a look how many elements we selected. Okay, package eating, I can unselect some elements just to have a light export that will not take a lot of time to export. 
of the structure in polarium. Okay. This project is, is quite huge, so I have many elements. Okay. Okay. As you can see, all the all the packages are immediately marked as leading and marked also to be exported in, in, in Polarium. Okay, so after that, I guess I will have a lot of elements. Just pressing next, the system will build, will collect all the all the items I I, I selected. Okay, we have 93 elements totally. <clears throat> the system is creating the diagram, this diagram, and this one will be imported in, uh, in, uh, in Polarion. The process will, can take a lot of time. Uh, it's depend depending on, on, on uh, two uh, 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 things, basically. Um, the quality, let me say, uh, of, of your computer, you're running uh, Enterprise Active and APO, the connection between your computer and, and, and the server, and of course the, the, the Polaris server uh, uh, current load. In this, in this moment, we, we, are going to, we are exporting 93 elements, so it will take a bit of time, but not so much. <clears throat> Meanwhile, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Meanwhile, I can take a look at the, at the project, and yeah, I would like them just to see two, three, four elements, two, three, nine. As you can see here, the item are the number of the item are increasing. Because the system is exporting the items and committing the item in, in, in Polarium. Okay. Consider that actually I am on a on a laptop and this desktop you are you are watching is just my virtual machine so the speed is related to of course that I'm not on a on a real machine. I have just something like four gigabytes or less or of memory. exporting everything. Finally, after the item are created in Polygon, the item will be linked together. This is one of the, the, the best feature that uh, uh, AATO 2.0 have uh, has instead of the uh, light, later version, the first version we, we, we release it. Uh, and uh, it's very important because the first version we're able only to export the items in a, let me say, flat way. So without any kind of relationship between items, but uh, we decided to improve this functionality in the, in the version 2.0, uh, in particular to have this, this, uh, uh, a relationship between items. And so the same relationship we have um, between elements and enterprise architects are exported and are the same you can see inside, inside 
your your uh, client project. By default, the relationship uh, is uh, uh, is defined as related to, to kind of the type of linkage is related to. <clears throat> so the export finishing with success. And inside Enterprise Architect, we can see this, this table that is basically the um, results of the export with all the elements uh, uh, we exported. As you can see, uh, there are a lot of readings because I didn't, I didn't uncollect uh, uh, some of them, but uh, she will have the elements that uh, we are interested to, to use uh, inside the, the, the project. Uh, basically, the system exported the book list uh, we selected as element uh, as object in Internet Enterprise Architect, and uh, the plugin type uh, is created as um, issue. Okay, this is the, uh, specifically the um, work item uh, ID type, is not the description, is the, the ID type. So inside this interface, we can do the, the follow uh, uh, operation. First of all, we can take a look at the, all the elements exported, of course. And so then we have also two buttons here. One that is able to open the item inside Enterprise Architect. This is, a, this is nice. Just take a look, for example, at the diagram. It's a diagram, uh, uh, which kind of diagram we had in, inside the Enterprise Architect. And the second button is able to also to open the polarity. But it's also is able to open Polarion inside the Enterprise Architect itself. Uh, this is a feature we, we decided to implement in this way because the, the Enterprise Architect user, the, all the, the people that already are, uh, that are were already user of Enterprise Architect, uh, will work in the same environment that they are used to, to, to work in. So uh, they, they don't have to open a Polarion or web browser or something like that. They can work directly inside the same interface. Uh, <clears throat> this is the export. This is the work item, 506. You can also uh, see here is the same, absolutely. Um, and uh, the AAPO created uh, uh, an image with, uh, with the same diagram we had in, uh, in Enterprise Architect. And some, also some information were exported uh, inside, the, uh, inside the project, uh, like the author, like the, the creation time of the, of the object. Uh, and all this kind of information uh, uh, came from, uh, that is from Enterprise Architect. Then at the bottom, we have also the, the link to Enterprise Architect. So uh, following this link, the system is able to open directly the, the diagram. So I can be also share and it's the same because I can directly, yes, I can, I can immediately open the, the diagram. Um, it's an Enterprise Architect. Um, okay. The same for, of course, for the items and all the objects we had <clears throat> are immediately uh, uh, exported in, uh, in, uh, in Polarion. In uh, <clears throat> following my, my configuration, <clears throat> the AAPO exported all the fields inside the description of the, of the work item. <clears throat> I can decide also to uh, map all this information, like a custom field, uh, just not to have all this kind of this uh, uh, inside the, 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 the description. Imagine, for example, for a diagram that we would like to have inside, I don't know, a document or something like that. Uh, it's very unhelpful and a bit annoying, let me say, to have all this kind of information inside the, uh, uh, just inside the table. So uh, if you are in Enterprise in AAPO and press F1, um, the system uh, asks you if you would like to map the items uh, directly in the in the custom field. And the the way to do that is just to to create. Let me just find where point is in the document. Uh, if you would like to, to specify um, inside your Polygon project the custom field, and the APO will recognize automatically that the custom field exists in your project, 
And all the all the information you can see here in the inside the description will be imported immediately in the in the Pascal field. Um, the way to do that is very easy. And basically, you can do that inside your install of Enterprise Architect here. Microsoft and inside here you have the, the the XML that is the definition for the custom field inside Colarian. You can import this file in Colarian, and so uh, dynamically the the system will recognize that all this kind of information should map directly inside the custom field instead of uh, uh, shown here inside the, the description. Well. Um, this is the first export. So right now my process uh, has uh, had success. I exported some some elements inside inside my uh, my project, and now I can start the the collaboration. I can start to work to for my uh, to my diagram, my elements I exported from from AA to uh, uh, to Polarium. I can work inside Polarium. So for example, if I open my diagram. Another user, imagine a, 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 a situation where, where um, an architect defined the elements, defined the object inside the enterprise architect, and a um, requiring manager uh, should approve or disapprove or change the status, basically, of, uh, of an item, can uh, uh, decide, okay, this item is fine, uh, the, the description uh, it's correct. Uh, all the diagram is, uh, is right. I can approve the um, the item, review it, and I can also add some comments here just to say, uh, okay, for me the diagram is right. Save. So I can I can directly use my my element here inside, and so then, uh, enter, um, um, the APO can take the um, can synchronize the information about the status and the eventual comment uh, that someone placed on on the on the element in uh, inside Polarium <clears throat> to uh, perform the. Um, let me say that the workflow to 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 collaborate between between uh, different persons. So in my example, I uh, I simulate that uh, uh, a designer creates uh, an object inside my enterprise asset, then export the object, export the diagram to Polarium, and then a request manager accepts the the item, modify the status, and add a comment, and so now uh, uh, the designer can take a look at the differences at the at the, the status of the item using uh, uh, directly the the APO. So <clears throat> this user can can go to the extension Polar integration and then import to Polarium. The process will be basically the same we we, we used before. So we have to specify specify the server and APO. Admin, admin here, just a test connection, then next. And now the system in the second in the second interface has to uh, for an existing mapping. This is because the in the first export we created the item in Polarian. But now we have to uh, just to take the information from Polarian back to Enterprise Architect to know that the status, the process. And uh, for in in my example, if my diagram uh, uh, has been accepted or or commented or something like that. So here I have to pick up my my database. My database was stored in my desktop, and uh, uh, this is the one. Open it. Next, and then the system gets yes, for all the elements we had in the mapping. For all the items that are in Polarium, for all the items that, that I have in my enterprise asset, the difference for new comments or new status we have in, in our Polarium. So this is very helpful for the, 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 um, the designer that are able immediately to, to know 
if the process go ahead, if uh, something, uh, some object has issue or something like that, and can take the information back inside the same interface. And from here, uh, I can immediately do the same thing uh, that the can do uh, after the, uh, the export. So I can open in Polarion the object, taking a look if the diagram, uh, for example, in this case, is being accepted or can add uh, itself also some, some information like comments and something like that also in the same, uh, in the same Polarion. <clears throat> In case something should be modified, uh, it can do that. It can open the diagram. It can modify the diagram in some way. For example, maybe it is locked in some way. Oh, probably yes. You can add. Is it locked? Oh, yeah. Locked diagram. So, we can modify something in our diagram, save it. And then, uh, after this modification, of course, then, uh, our goal will be to synchronize back this modification to, to our, our Polarion. Uh, as I told you at the beginning of my presentation, Enterprise Architect is quite, let me say, um, the master of the process in this case because the, the, the um, diagramming and the structure are delegated just at, inside the enterprise architect. If I, I modify something in Polarion, like the description, like the diagram itself, it will not be synchronized back to the enterprise architect. But enterprise architect is the master, so in this way I can come back to my Polarion integration. I can select uh, uh, as a, in the end of time, the export to Polarion, and I can provide the same information. Local host, AAPO, admin, admin, test connection. Oops, local host. Okay, fine. And if you remember this, this interface uh, uh, during the, the first export, I told you that it's possible to select an existing database or to create a new one. The first time we created a new one, right now we had to, to select an existing one just because we would like to synchronize and not to create other, other uh, uh, items in Colorian. So we can pick up an existing mapping and back to our uh, database. So then next, the system will load again all the, the quiz structure we, we have seen at the beginning. But as you will see, when the system will load it, you can see that <clears throat> some uh, uh, lines are uh, uh, in a different color. And this is because um, these items are already exported in, in, in our Polarion. As you can see, here the um, orange, pink, as depends on the screen, uh, are, are underlined. So it means that this element is already present in Polarion and will be also updated again. Updated again because Enterprise Architect is the master. So all the modification I can do inside the interface are, in, are during the synchronization, during the export, are immediately uh, um, replaced in in in, in Polarion, and this is valid for uh, the custom fields that are defined for Enterprise Act and Polarion, or in my case, the description, the title, and the content of the description. This is very important. So uh, it doesn't matter if you modify the description; the description will be over 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 written when I perform this kind of operation. So uh, that resynchronization uh, to, to Polarion. Um, but the nice thing is that in, in, in this process, I can also select additional elements to be exported in, in Polarion. For example, now I would like to uh, create these, like, uh, for example, a risk. Yes, map all the items like that. And so I can, Go to next, 
and the system will export that all my items again to my uh, uh, to my plan. During the, the synchronization process, that basically is the same we, we saw during the first textbook. Uh, it will take a bit of time as, as before. Um, I would like to, uh, to talk to you about uh, where it's possible to get the, the, the extension. Uh, it's possible to get the extension on our website. Uh, www.mrsaf.com in the, yeah, the website right now is just in Italian language, but in the product Polarium software, there is the AAPO. There are also some, some other uh, um, projects and some other products we have. Basically, AAPO is available for, for the download share, and you can get also the, uh, the, the 30 day full functionality trial version uh, where it's possible to do all the operations that I did. And the system will, uh, after the, the download of the, of the extension, uh, will create for you a license with a very simple wizard that will, will go to uh, our website and allow you to, to create a uh, license in case of issue, in case of any, any kind of question you, you may have about the, the integration, 